last year was a funny one. I set myself some musical tasks to achieve over the course of the 12 months, and I managed to complete pretty much everything I wanted to do. It wasn't a lot, mind. Nothing too hardcore. Do a gig a month, write and release an EP and some singles, go to some open mics and perhaps appear on a radio show. I think I managed it all, and although I don't recall doing performance in December, there was a month that I think I played two gigs, maybe even three, who cares. The beauty of writing words and then speaking them on the internet, if you're a nobody like me, is that no one's qualified to argue with you. Aside from my mate Richard's song buttons, but uh, I'm sure he won't bother. He has better things to do, like sell my songs to Marvel Studios and uh, Glee, if that's still a thing. Hey mate. It's quite scary how history can be rewritten by talking on the internet. It's the same as bigging out the shit gig you just came off stage from. Talking about it on social media as if you just played Wembley in 1986, supported by the Beatles, to a sellout crowd of musical journalists at £700 a head. Whereas how your gig really went is that there were seven people in total in the audience. Four people at the bar, including the bassist mum, not giving a fuck. The other band nowhere to be seen, and the drunk wanker on stage picking up the percussion and trying to get involved. Oh wait, that's just the drummer. <laughs> Lol. To be fair, I'm usually the drunk wanker on stage. <clears throat> It's all just faff. Social media has created a lot of faff and it's affecting everything so fast I have trouble and often not a lot of interest in keeping up. It's fun to share some stuff every now and then, but banging away on it at all platforms is just a headache to me. Do I have rose-tinted glasses towards the methods of publicity from old? I did for a podcast. I would generally like to investigate how social media and old school flyering stacks up against each other for getting the word out about gigs and then make a podcast out of it. Anyway, I've digressed already, and it's only been about 30 seconds. Unfortunately, I noticed something towards the end of my musical year, and in all honesty, the feeling may have been stuck in the back of my mind for a while, and it's that a lot of what I was accomplishing was no longer as satisfying as it should have been. This has led me to reassess what the fuck I'm doing, both musically and personally. I started wondering what's actually left if the musical side of me is stripped away, and what happens if this occurs when my creative juices dry up like Hollywood's. Would I be in need of a reboot, another tired sequel, or perhaps just axed instead, funding cuts and kicked to the side of the curb like a discarded Man City substitute? I have always made music, even when I don't intend to. I'll open up the Mac top and find 30 demos I produced last week when I was tinkering with a new preset. Demos I didn't even remember recording and may have taken less than a few minutes to complete. But sometimes that's all I need. A few minutes to get an idea down, an hour to layer some loops, or three hours of plugging in the amplifier and riffing like a madman, reading Mad Magazine playing John Madden on a 14-inch CRT while watching The Hand Madden's Tale. Music making is satisfying. What's even more satisfying is opening the Mac top to find that I have written enough to slowly start turning some of these ideas into full songs, with the intention of releasing an EP, a single, or in the most recent case, a possible album. Of course, let me clarify that when I say release, I mean stick up on the internet to signify that it is done, and also perhaps get some CDs ordered to sell to no one at my gigs. I'll get them printed up because I like a physical package, that's what she said. I like to have something to hold in my hand and file into a small space of its own. Sometimes it will stay in that place for a very long time and sometimes it will be fetched and utilised on a compatible audio system sooner, so I can get lost in its songs or play it as my accompaniment for making dinner. The sleeves for my releases always look awesome. I have a very talented guy, one of my best mates doing most of the artwork for me in his very limited spare time. I didn't understand streaming and Spotify for a long while. I do now and enjoy the service, especially considering I don't have an income at the moment and cannot currently afford to buy any albums outright. I have put my Rise of the Ziggurat music on Spotify and other apps like iTunes. I don't think it's something in itself to be proud of, that part of the experience isn't really that hard, that's what she said. All I do is bang 20 quid to distro kid a year, and they sort out all the admin for me. Well, until the invoice bounces, <laughs> lol. For the record, I have at the time of writing made two pounds from streaming services, which just sits in their account until it gets large enough to withdraw. The subject of gigs is mainly where I've had issues over the past few months. I'm not going to get into why today, I'm still trying to articulate my thoughts on the matter as I fear they may be a bit isolating, and I need to prepare myself for that and make sure I can stand by my opinions in a mildly heated debate. Personally, the last couple of years have been a little stressful to put it mildly, so the continued opportunity to make music and release it to an unsuspecting audience of at least seven loyal fans has been a great antithesis to that stress. Antithesis. 
Writing my sounds from the Ziggurat podcast also helped, and was born from the lingering acknowledgement that to improve my situation, I had to change it. Unfortunately, I didn't change it in time, and in the end a decision was made for me. Every time I try and put Rise of the Ziggurat on the back burner to concentrate on something else, I fail. It creeps in out of nowhere and takes over, slowly gnawing away until I have a finished product to release. We all know music is subjective, and that's the key to remaining true to yourself. My work has been of varying levels of quality and production value over the years, and I'm totally at peace with that. After all, it was made by me, for me, and any little interest I get outside of that is a welcome bonus. It has taken me on tour around the UK, to a festival in Germany, and also to many new pubs I would not have explored and got spanned in otherwise. Along the way I have made some great contacts, some of whom have become good friends, and this is another awesome side of making music and sharing it with people. I'm not interested in chasing the audience outside of a few experiments, and that is commonly, in my opinion, where one starts to compromise. One of the experiments I carried out was paying some small change to a couple of different people to get me more likes and views on my I'm Fine at Sea video. And you know what? It worked. Did anyone actually watch it, aside from the two people who left comments over that period? One being from one of my best mates down under. Possibly, but again, who cares? I saw for myself that as with everything in this world, your situation and stature can be shallowly improved by throwing some cash at it. And some people have a lot of cash to throw around, certainly more than I. My task for the next few months is to put together an album as a sort of bookend of the last 10 years or so of Rise of the Ziggurat, and I'm going to record these little vlogs, podcasts to track its progress, and also serve as a bit of motivation too. I lost my job last year and I'm having trouble finding adequate hours elsewhere at the moment, and let's just say this can lead to some bad habits, and I already have enough of those as it is. I'll always be writing and recording as I said, but I think I need a stronger plan than usual. Hopefully this process can effectively monitor how things are going with regards to recording and whether any progress is being made. It also might be a bit of fun too. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe and click the little bell if you want to hear more rambling from myself over the next few months on this journey. Hopefully there will be some other uploads too, maybe even some actual music. The website to find my back catalogue is riseofthezigarette.co.uk and I also sometimes put things on Instagram under Rise of the Ziggurat too. Thanks for listening. Sunny day.